Imagine for a moment that a Stoic philosopher from ancient times was transported to our modern world. They find themselves standing amidst the chaos of a bustling city street, surrounded by a sea of people, all of whom were deeply engrossed in the glow of their smartphones. As car horns blare and neon signs flash, our Stoic friend might pause, taking a moment to observe this strange new environment. And yet, despite the overwhelming stimuli, they would likely retain their composure, embody that classic Stoic demeanor, and proceed to navigate the situation with the same reasoned tranquility they applied to life's tribulations over two millennia ago. Greetings, fellow seekers of wisdom and welcome to our journey through the biggest ideas in philosophy, where Stoicism isn't just ancient history, it's a living, breathing guide for modern existence. How can a school of thought, established long before the internet, before even the concept of traffic lights, help us in our 21st century lives? Well, that's the beauty of Stoicism. The challenges may have evolved, but the core principles of courage, wisdom, temperance, and justice remain timeless. Now more than ever, our society is plagued by an epidemic of stress, a crisis of meaning, and an ever-increasing pace of life that leaves little room for reflection. Stoicism teaches us to pause, to analyze our thoughts, and to discern what is within our control. As we face a world of infinite choice and relentless change, the steadfastness of Stoic philosophy offers a sanctuary from the storm. As we explore these colossal ideas that have shaped human thought and behavior, we'll uncover how the Stoics might navigate not only a noisy city, street, but the intricate labyrinths of the modern psyche. We'll delve into the essence of Stoic wisdom, apply it to today's existential dilemmas, and see how it can transform our lives. From managing daily stressors to facing life's most daunting challenges, Stoicism has a blueprint for it all. So let's embark on this intellectual odyssey together, with minds open and judgments suspended, as we unravel the wisdom that has traversed generations. Whether you're grappling with minor annoyances or confronting your greatest fears, the Stoics have left us a roadmap for resilience and fulfillment. Stay with me, and let's dive deep into these ideas that glow as brightly now as they did under the Mediterranean sun of Zeno's Agora. And so, my dear modern-day Zenos, let us pause our philosophical promenade to ask ourselves, what exactly is Stoicism? Some might quip it's the art of not giving a fig about life's lemons, but in truth, Stoicism is more akin to making the finest lemonade without sugar, water, or a juicer. Imagine if you will, a life hack so powerful that it could turn traffic jams into tranquility and rejection into reflection. That's Stoicism for you, the ancient equivalent of a Swiss army knife for the soul. Picture a Stoic as a spiritual MacGyver. Someone who, stranded on the deserted island of existential despair, can fashion a raft out of raw discipline and oars from pure reason. It's not about suppressing feelings or pretending that hardships are non-existent. No, stoicism isn't about becoming an emotionless robot. It's about becoming the coolest cucumber in the produce aisle of life's supermarket. It's the internal fortitude that allows you to say, sure I could explode into a firework of frustration over this unscheduled plot twist, or I could navigate through it with the serenity of a monk on a Netflix binge. But don't mistake this mirth for mockery, for the Stoics were onto something sublime. Like a life coach who doesn't charge by the hour, Stoic philosophy teaches us that it's not the events themselves that disrupt our peace, but our judgments about them. Lose your job. An opportunity for a new beginning. Stuck in a long line at the coffee shop. A chance to practice patience and savor the anticipation of that first sip. Neighbor decided to practice tuba at three, um, a test of your capacity for forgiveness, or at least your investment in earplugs. This isn't merely about finding silver linings, but weaving an entire bulletproof vest out of them. It's about recognizing that, while we cannot control external events, we can control our reactions. Traffic doesn't care about your schedule, and the universe isn't out to get you with inclement weather. These are mere occurrences, as indifferent to you as a cat to your expensive furniture. Stoicism then, my friends, is the ultimate life hack, teaching us to focus on what truly matters, our actions, our responses, and our will to face life's myriad challenges with a blend of courage and calm. So as we waltz through the vast dance floor of Stoic philosophy, remember that every step, every movement, 
Every twirl is a lesson in the art of living. And with that, let's slide into the next beat and explore how these ancient hacks, I mean, timeless principles, can be applied to the dizzy, digital age we find ourselves in. Continuing our exploration of stoicism, let's rewind the clocks back to the very beginning, to a curious fellow by the name of Zeno of Citium. Picture this, there's Zeno, shipwrecked in Athens, losing not only his merchandise but his entire life's work to the unforgiving sea. But as fate would have it, this disastrous twist leads him to a bookstore, where he stumbles upon the works of Socrates. Imagine his awe as he turns those time-worn pages, each word seeping into his being, igniting a fire of philosophical pursuit. With the tenacity of a scrappy entrepreneur, Zeno starts his own philosophical venture, right there on the steps of the store Poikil, the painted porch. Think of it as the garage where Apple began. Only instead of tech gadgets, Zeno was crafting revolutionary ideas. There, amidst the colonnades and freezes, he pitches his vision to anyone who'd listen. A vision of living in accordance with nature, mastery, desires, and maintaining equanimity amidst life's tempests. As with any startup, Zeno's early days saw him fine, tuning his philosophy, a blend of the best parts of cynicism with its disdain for materialism, and the Socratic method of questioning everything. He was the CEO, the product designer, and the marketing department, all wrapped in one, extolling the virtues of stoicism to an audience of thinkers, seekers, and perhaps the occasional skeptical passerby. This quirky startup story sees Zeno iterating on ideas, bringing in collaborators like Cleanthes and Chrysippus, who would become the coup and CTO of Stoicism, respectively. Together, they expanded the product line, delving into logic, ethics, and physics, dissecting the world's workings and the human role within it. Fast forward through the centuries, and Zeno's Stoicism started resembling a mature company, its influence spreading throughout the Hellenistic world like wildfire. Stoic branches set up shop in the hearts and minds of statesmen, writers, and emperors alike. Yes, the ancient startup that began on the painted porch was growing into an empire of thought, one that would stand the test of time. Now, as we retrace our steps to where Zeno pitched his Stoic app to the world, let's not simply view him as a figure of the past. Instead, think of him as the original disruptor, a man whose ideas would birth a philosophy that remains as relevant today as it was on those Athenian street corners where Western thought was taking its very first steps. From a shipwrecked merchant to the father of a philosophical movement that would echo through the ages, Zeno's journey is a testament to the power of resilience. It's a tale that adds a rich historical layer to the stoic wisdom we unpack today. As we navigate the digital age with our modern dilemmas, his life reminds us that sometimes our greatest setbacks are merely preludes to our most profound revelations. As we delve deeper into the vast vault of Stoic wisdom, we encounter a concept so grand, so pervasive, it's like the Wi-Fi of the cosmos, ever, present, unseen yet connecting everything. This is the Logos, the universal reason, the cosmic DJ spinning the records of reality, in a harmony that synchronizes the dance of the stars the rhythm of the tides, and the little jig your toaster does when the bread pops up. It's the code underlying all of existence, the software running the universe, making sure that apps like Gravities and Photosynthesis keep getting those critical updates. Now, imagine if Yoda the Sage of Star Wars, instead of speaking of the Force, talked about the Logos. In all things the Logos is, guide your actions, it will. The Logos doesn't hold a lightsaber, but it does cut through chaos with the precision of a Jedi Master, endowing the cosmos with order and intelligibility. In the Stoic motherboard, the Logos is the ultimate algorithm, one that doesn't need debugging. It's not a capricious overseer playing chess with our fates, it's more like an open source protocol, a set of natural laws kindly guiding us towards virtue, should we choose to follow. For the Stoics, aligning with the Logos isn't a matter of installing the latest life hack app, it's about syncing with the universe's operating system, finding the signal amidst the noise, tuning into the universal frequency that pings quietly beneath life's hustle and bustle. Think of the Logos as your life's GPs. Only instead of guiding you to the nearest coffee shop, it navigates you through the moral landscape of the world. 
You're on a road trip, and in the passenger seat, you've got Socrates babbling about ethics, Epictetus reminding you to check your emotional baggage, and Marcus Aurelius jotting down meditations for his next blog entry. Meanwhile, the Logos provides the map, calmly suggesting, in 300 meters, turn left at the crossroad of choice and virtue. This concept might seem like a distant philosophical cloud floating high above our digital planes, yet it's more down to earth than your favorite superhero. Just as Spider-Man slings webs from skyscraper to skyscraper, the Logos connects individuals to the massive web of humanity. It whispers the unwritten rules of the human saga, nudging us to jive with justice, groove with goodness, and waltz with wisdom. Let's be real. The Logos won't slide into your DMs or update your status to enlighten. But as you navigate through the megabytes of modern mayhem, know that the Logos is your ally, the unseen guide helping your inner stoic superhero. Traverse the internet, infused infinity gauntlet that is life. And so, as Zeno would surely appreciate, the Logos is not an ancient relic to be shelved alongside VS tapes and floppy disks. It's a vital, vibrant force as essential to our existential explorations as a smartphone is to finding the perfect emoji. As we dance through the digital age, let's keep the Logos Wi-Fi signal strong, ensuring our ethical connections remain uninterrupted and our morale. Compass stays true north. Now, flick on the high beams of insight as we prepare to turn the corner into our next philosophical avenue. Buckle up, the stoic road trip continues, with the Logos as our ever-reliable co-pilot. As we continue our stoic quest, we stumble upon a treasure. Trove, a concept so precious that it could be likened to the ultimate level up in the grand video game of life. This gem is virtue, the core in game for every stoic character. But don't mistake it for an elusive easter egg, accessible only to the most hardcore gamers with cheat codes. Virtue is available to us all, ah. Uh, reward for those who choose to play life's challenges with honor, integrity, and moral excellence. Imagine virtue as a multifaceted power-up, gleaming with the four cardinal jewels of stoic thought. Wisdom, the strategic map that reveals the most. Judicious path in every level. Courage the shield that protects us from the fiery darts of fear and anxiety, temperance, the meter that ensures we use our resources with mindful restraint, and justice, the compass that guides our interactions, ensuring we treat NPCs, non-player characters or, in our case, fellow humans, with fairness and benevolence. As players in the virtual realm, we often pursue achievements, badges of honor that showcase our skill and dedication, in the game of Stoicism, however, virtue isn't just a badge to display in our trophy case. It's the very essence that upgrades our character stats, enhancing not our digital avatar, but our real-world selves. Virtue equips us to face the boss battles of life with a calm, strategic approach. Whether it's the minotaur of a toxic workplace, or the hydra of personal insecurities, virtue imbues us with the character attributes needed to emerge victorious. Now picture this. The game of life throws a twist, a sudden plot development that requires a choice. Do you pursue the path of instant gratification, gathering the low-hanging coins of fleeting pleasures? Or do you embark on the arduous quest for the golden apples of virtue, knowing they yield the power to unlock the true ending, one of inner peace and fulfillment? The Stoics knew the answer, and it wasn't found in the temporary boost of an invincibility star. It was in the lasting transformation that only virtue can bring. In gaming, we speak of grinding, the repetitive action taken to level up, gain experience, and progress. Similarly, the acquisition of virtue is not an instant power spike. It's a grind, a daily practice of making ethical choices, learning from our mistakes, and slowly but surely aligning our will with the Logos. The Stoic game is infinitely replayable, each run offering new lessons and opportunities to refine our mastery over virtue. It's Dark Souls meets Aristotle, a challenge that demands patience, persistence, and resilience. But here's the twist. In the game of Stoicism, every player can win. Virtue is not a zero-sum match. It's a cooperative multiplayer experience where success is shared, not hoarded. By fostering virtue, we not only level up ourselves, but we assist others in their own quests creating a gaming community where the high scores are measured in meaningful lives and the leaderboard celebrates those who uplift humanity. 
as we gear up for the next level, remember that virtue isn't an accessory to equip or a buff to cast. It's the very heart of the stoic way. It's the legendary gear set that defines our character's legacy, ensuring that when the final credits roll, our playthrough leaves an impact. Worthy of the Hall of Fame, keep your controllers at the ready, for the Stoics' game is one of continual growth and moral excellence. And with Virtue as our unparalleled upgrade, we're more than mere players. We're the shapers of destiny itself. Now, let's press starts on the next chapter of our philosophical adventure. The path ahead is rich with opportunity and brimming with trials, but with Virtue as our guide, the ultimate high score, eudaimonia, or a flourishing life is within our grasp. Engage your moral engines, for our virtuous voyage is about to take flight. As we draw from the wellspring of stoic knowledge, we encounter a concept as pivotal to stoicism as the joystick is to an arcade game, the dichotomy of control. Envision, if you will, a stoic control pad nestled in the palms of your hands. It's sleek, uncomplicated, with only two buttons essential for navigating the sprawling open world of existence. These are labeled influence and let go, and mastering their use is to play the game of life like a seasoned pro. The influence button, when pressed, activates our power to act, to speak, to choose, to exert effort. It's the button we hit when we decide to wake up before dawn to seize the day, to learn a new skill, or to extend kindness to a stranger. Influence reminds us of our agency, the capacity to make decisions and take actions that shape the pixels of our personal reality. It's the creative spark, the input of effort that propels our character forward against the relentless drag of passivity and procrastination. Then there's the let go button, a stoic feature that many struggle to utilize effectively. It triggers release, acceptance, the art of surrendering to what lies beyond our control. Think of it as the stoic mantra in electronic form, a button that when engaged, helps our character breathe easy amidst the chaos of an unpredictable level. It's the power of equanimity in the face of an in-game storm or an unexpected plot twist, such as a global pandemic or an economic downturn. The dichotomy of control is not about resignation, but strategic play. It's knowing when to push influence to shape the contour of our journey, and when to hit let go to glide serenely over the terrain we cannot change. Every Stoic sage, Seneca, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, knew the importance of this dichotomy, of discerning between what is up for grabs in the cosmic arcade and what is as immovable as the console itself. Consider the influence button like your character's energy gauge. You only have so much at your disposal, and how you spend it will define your progress through the game. Will you use it fretting over the non-playable character's opinions or on side quests that lead nowhere? Or will you channel it into mastering your skills, forging alliances and defeating the shadowy bosses of self-doubt and fear? As for let go, imagine it as the button that, when pushed, allows your character to regenerate, to recuperate from the wear and tear of the quests and battles. It's the acknowledgement that some fights are not ours to engage in some paths are impassable, and that there's profound strength in gracefully sidestepping the unnecessary to conserve energy for what truly aligns with our quest. Incorporating the dichotomy of control into our daily gameplay, we learn to avoid the common pitfall of button mashing, the frantic and futile pressing of influence on events, immovable as mountains. Likewise, we resist the urge to spam, let go out of apathy or fear when action is called for. It's the delicate dance of dynamic balance, the fluid responsiveness to the ever-shifting game environment that marks the difference between a novice and a stoic virtuoso. So as we progress through the complex levels of the 21st century, with its high-speed internet dungeons and its social media minefields, let us wheel the stoic control pad with intention and skill. For in mastering the dichotomy of control, we not only level up in the game of life, we also become connoisseurs of freedom, cultivating a sense of power and peace within the world's sprawling arena. Bear this in mind. Stoicism isn't about playing it safe or staying on the tutorial level forever. It's about engaging fully, pushing the influence button with conviction when it's our turn to act, and gracefully hitting, let go, when the currents of fate sweep us into uncharted waters. 
Let's keep this stoic control pad in easy reach as we advance to the next segment, ready to apply the dichotomy of control to the myriad minigami and epic quests that define our existence. Stay tuned, for the game is far from over, and the next level promises to put our stoic skills to the ultimate test, if Epictetus were to walk into our contemporary arena, a place where tweets are mightier than the sword and every moment is an Instagram opportunity. He'd likely share zingers that cut through the digital noise with the precision of a well-aimed hashtag. And since we're channeling the spirit of this stoic heavyweight, let's remix some of his timeless insights with a sprinkle of 21st century flavor. Picture Epictetus as a philosophical influencer, his tweets going viral not for scandal, but for sagacity. With every post he'd remind us, we have two ears and one mouth, so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. In a world where everyone is clamoring to be heard, imagine how revolutionary it would be if we scrolled less and listened more. Truly listened, more. Just with the intent to reply but to understand. Listen more tweetless than there's the classic. It's not what happens to you but how you react that matters. In the era of online outrage and knee-jerk reactions, this would be the caption under a serene selfie, not taken in an exotic locale, but in the quiet refuge of one's own mind. Epictetus would have us master the art of the mental pause button, taking a breath before we comment, share, or lash out. React with reason Epictetus would likely have a field day with our modern obsessions, status, likes, followers. He'd remind us wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Swipe up for fulfillment, down for envy. He'd encourage a detox from the marketplace of materialism, cultivating contentment and simplicity, finding richness and experiences over things. Wantless have more. But Epictetus wasn't all about the Zen, he was practical too. He'd surely point out that no man is free who is not master of himself. Self-control would be his viral challenge, not planking or ice buckets, but the mastery of impulses and desires. His stories would feature tips for discipline, the triumphs over temptation, the sweet victory of a will in alignment with virtue. A self-mastery challenge in our hyper-connected yet paradoxically isolated world. Epictetus' teaching, all the world's a stage, and all the world's a stage, and all the men, and women merely players, would resonate deeply. He'd advocate for authenticity in a filtered reality, urging us to drop the act and embrace our true roles, directing our energy toward the script. We wish to write for ourselves. We must carry you on days when the burden of existence weighs heavy, when the notifications are too many, and the inbox is daunting, Epictetus would offer a refuge of perspective. Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will. Then your life will flow well. His profile would be a beacon of acceptance, the go, to for soothing mindfulness. Flow with life and for his final zinger, a tweet to pin to the top of his philosophical feed, Epictetus would lay down the gauntlet of responsibility. With, if you wish to improve, be content to appear clueless or stupid, in extraneous matters. In a society that pressures us to have an opinion on everything, he'd challenge us to focus on self-improvement, rather than external validation. To his fools, as our digital journey with Epictetus concludes, let's not just double tap or swipe on these insights. Instead, Implement these remixed zingers into the code of our daily lives, programming habits that echo the wisdom of the ancients in our ultra-modern world. With a nod to the stoic influencer from the past, let's log off this segment not just informed but transformed. Stay tuned, for the stoic network never goes offline, and the ancient signal remains strong. Up next, we'll explore how these maxims can manifest in real-world scenarios, providing practical strategies for an upgraded life. Keep your mind in airplane mode, free from distractions, as we ascend to greater philosophical heights, as we zoom in on the bust of Marcus Aurelius. You might half expect the marble to crack into a smile, an emperor, yes, but also a philosopher who juggled the scepter and the journal with unmatched poise. Now ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts as we're about to reimagine the day, today of this stoic emperor as a sitcom episode. Cue the laugh track and the strumming lutes for this one, of a kind antique episode, Marcus's Meditations, A Day in the Life. 
the scene opens with the sun rising over the marble columns of ancient Rome. The camera pans across the opulent palace, past the centurion standing guard, and slips through an ajar door into the private chambers of our philosopher king. There he sits, quill in hand, pausing thoughtfully before jotting down the day's reflection. Our life is what our thoughts make it, he scribes as his trusty advisor interrupts. Marcus, the barbarians are at the gate, the senate is in uproar, and, oh, your wife demands your presence for breakfast. So begins the existential escapade of Marcus, ruler by day, sage by starlight. As he strides into the grand dining hall, his presence commands the room. His family is already there, sniping at one another over trivialities, gems, gowns and gains. With a knowing glance toward the audience, Marcus takes his seat and dispenses a dollop of stoic wisdom, better to trip with the feet than with the tongue, effectively silencing the morning squabbles. The episode unfolds, a series of vignettes illustrating the highs and lows of imperial life. We witness the emperor adjudicating disputes, settling trade arguments with a temperament so cool it could still Roman wine. Meanwhile, the laugh track punctuates his stoic one-liners, wisdom delivered with the timing of a seasoned comic. The best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice, equips to a room full of nodding patricians, eyebrows raised in surprise at their leader's unexpected wit. In true sitcom fashion, the day spirals into an amusing array of challenges. A delegation from a distant land presents a gift that's, well, less than regal. A chicken that dances upon command, the courtiers guffaw, but Marcus, ever the stoic, shows gratitude, seeing a lesson even in the ludicrous. Accept the things to which fate binds you, he remarks to the chicken, leaving the audience in stitches. As the sun dips below the sprawling city, the episode draws us into a surprisingly heartfelt moment. Marcus retires to his study, the quill back in his grasp reflecting on the day. The laughter fades into a soft contemplative silence. The emperor writes of impermanence, of accepting each day as a precious gift, leaving the viewers with something to chew on long after the credits. Roll. Our sitcom, style adventure with Marcus Aurelius might be an amusing detour from the usual stoic discourse, but peek beneath the surface humor and you'll find the enduring truths that governed his life. It's a reminder that wisdom can be served with a side of levity, and that even an emperor faced with the might of power and the fickleness of fate can navigate the tumult with a philosopher's heart and a comedian's grace. So as our laughter echoes through the halls of time, we realize that the essence of stoicism transcends the genre and form. Whether etched in stone or delivered in a punchline, the teachings of Marcus Aurelius offer a script to live by, one that's as relevant today as it was in the golden days of Rome. Join me next time as we step out of the sitcom and back into the forum, exploring how the lessons from Marcus's meditations can be applied to the modern workplace turning office politics into a stage for practicing stoic virtues. Until then, remember to bookmark your own life's journal. Each day is a new episode, and you're the protagonist in an epic tale of wisdom in action. As we swap scrolls for screens, let us imagine the stoic sage Seneca in today's digital landscape, where his letters composed with the grace of a master wordsmith are now 280 character bursts of enlightenment lighting up our feeds. Bound by brevity, these tweets from Seneca reveal that wisdom need not be long-winded to resonate through the ages. Each tweet emerges as a trending topic in the Stoic community, a modern-day missive that condenses a lifetime of insight into a snippet as shareable as it is profound. Picture the hashtag Senecan Saturdays where every weekend we unpack a new letter, turned, tweet, dispensing doses of Stoic guidance tailored for our high-speed lives. Imagine the retweets and replies as Seneca posts, true happiness is, to enjoy the present, without anxious dependence upon the future. The virtual landscape buzzes with discussions and interpretations, prompting users to pause in their ceaseless pursuit of what's next, and instead, savor the now. With every reminder to live in the moment, Seneca's character count challenges our own daily narratives filled with worries about tomorrow. Then, consider the viral impact of his wisdom on wealth and success as he tweets. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more. That is poor. 
Screen after screen lights up with the realization that abundance comes not from possessions, but from a sense of contentment that transcends material want. The stoic community retweets en masse, sparking a minimalist movement that values inner wealth over external excess. Picture also the supportive threads that weave through the virtual tapestry when Seneca reminds us, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. It becomes a call to disarm the phantom armies of anxiety that march within our minds. The tweet spreads like wildfire, prompting personal stories of triumph over fear and a collective nod to the enduring human spirit. Seneca's letters as tweets encourage a digital discourse on personal growth. With a click, he directs us to look inward. He who is brave is free. The online world pauses to reflect on the courage required to live authentically, to break the shackles of societal expectations, and to craft an existence where freedom is found in self-mastery. In this imagined world where Seneca's letters become guiding stars in the social media galaxy, his concise counsel morphs into daily rituals for his modern followers. The Stoic community, a global agora, taps into his ancient wisdom with the swift scroll of a thumb, finding in these virtual epistles a lighthouse for navigating the digital sea. As our section on Seneca's letters, imagining a world where Seneca's letters or tweets going viral in the Stoic community draws to a close, we're left with a profound connection to the past. The philosophical roots planted by Seneca's hand continue to flourish, now nourished by the fertile soil of modern technology. It's a testament to the timelessness of Stoic perspectives and the adaptive nature of wisdom in any epoch. Next time, we'll set our sights on the ever-rising sun of Stoic thought as it illuminates the paths we tread today. Together, we'll traverse the network of Stoicism in the workplace, gleaning insights on how to turn challenges into opportunities to exercise virtue and integrity. Envision your professional life enhanced by Seneca-like tweets. Each workday an opportunity to compose your own letter of wisdom. Stay with us, for the ancient dialogue endures, and each keystroke is a step toward a richer, more philosophical life, as we've examined the profound utterances of philosophers like Seneca in the imagined form of tweets. Let us pivot to a more personal medium, one that echoes through the corridors of time, stoic journaling. In this age of digital exhibitionism, where our thoughts are often broadcasted with reckless abandon on social media, the ancient practice of journaling invites us to a quieter, more introspective space, a space where philosophical depth outshines the fleeting sparkle of likes and retweets. Consider the Stoic Journal as your private forum, a sanctuary where you are both the orator and the audience. Here, in the boundless realm of the pages, or perhaps a digital document tucked away from the public eye, you engage in a dialogue with your deepest self. Each entry is a stitch in the rich tapestry of self-exploration, not curated for the eyes of others, but a raw and honest account of your internal discourse. Unlike a tweet designed to be consumed and quickly scrolled past, a journal entry resonates with the timeless rhythm of introspection, it's a place where the soul's whispers can transform into shouts of insight, where fleeting emotions find stability in written words. This isn't posting as we know it. It's posting God at the gates of your mind, ensuring that what enters and exits does so with intention and clarity. Marcus Aurelius's meditations serve as the quintessential example of stoic journaling, never intended for public display, yet offering profound, universal value. Each passage reflects a man wrestling with his higher aspirations, holding himself accountable, and seeking to crystallize the virtuous path in ink. Now, imagine if instead, Marcus had simply tweeted his reflections. Would the depth of his meditations be preserved? Would the intricate nuances of his thoughts survive the compression into 280 characters? Social media prompts us to project an idealized image of our lives, but stoic journaling calls us to confront the reality. It's the unfiltered chronicle of our struggles and triumphs, our mundane moments, and our monumental revelations. Through this practice, we can chart our progress as Stoics, not in the currency of public approval, but in the solid gold of personal development. Journaling, in this Stoic sense, is akin to a daily self-audit. With each entry, you're invited to evaluate your actions. Did I live in harmony with nature today? What virtues did I embody? Where did my reasoning falter? 
It's the act of pausing the external noise to tune into the internal frequency, the logos within, seeking to align your narrative with the larger cosmic story. Moreover, this stoic journal is a place for preparation and reflection. In the morning, it serves as a battlefield strategy, mapping out how you intend to navigate the day's challenges with stoic principles. At night, it becomes a place of review, assessing the skirmishes won and lost, learning from each encounter so tomorrow's approach may be even wiser. As we hold our stoic journals close, we realize that this practice is the antithesis of the ephemeral nature of social media. It's the deep dive into the psyche, a commitment to personal growth that stands in stark contrast to the shallow swells of the online sea. Stoic journaling is not about crafting a narrative for consumption, but about distilling the essence of our experiences into the elixir of wisdom. And so, while the digital age seduces us with the siren call of instant sharing, let us not forget the power of private contemplation. The Stoic journal remains a steadfast vessel, navigating us through the tumultuous waters of existence, preserving the philosophical depth that social media can so often dilute. In our next segment, we will explore how this practice of journaling, steeped in Stoic tradition, can act as a compass in the digital era, guiding us through the tempest of trends and the gales of groupthink. Keep your journals at the ready and your pens poised, for the voyage into the self is the greatest expedition of all, as our stoic journey wends its way through the labyrinth of modern-day trials. We come across a practice so deceptively powerful, it's like finding a secret level in life's vast game. This is the practice of negative visualization. But fear not, dear viewer, this is not the nihilistic navel, gazing that it might sound like. Rather, it's an exercise in mental resilience, a uh, simulation for the soul. Let's approach it with the whimsy of a child preparing for a make-believe adventure, and the seriousness of a general strategizing for the battlefield. Envision, if you will, waking to a day where everything has gone awry. The coffee pot sputters its last breath, leaving you caffeine. Less. Your car decides today's the day to become a lawn ornament, and your phone transforms into an expensive paperweight. It sounds like the beginning of a bleak comedy, yet within this cascade of calamities lies the gem of stoic training, the practice of premeditation, malorum, or the premeditation of evils. Now, imagine playing this game of misfortunes not with a frown, but with a grin of someone privy to life's inside jokes. You ponder the worst, yet in doing so, you inoculate yourself against the virulence of unexpected mishap. This stoic drill tasks you with visualizing challenges not to dwell on them, but to diminish their bite and bark when or if they do pounce from the shadows of the future. You see, dear viewer, the stoics weren't party poopers. They were the original life hackers. They understood that by periodically visualizing life's hurdles, we can buffer our emotions against the shock of their occurrence. It's akin to having a dress rehearsal for life's dramas, no surprise guest appearance is going to fluster your performance, because you've rehearsed even the unwelcome cameos. Consider that, in this secret level, you're equipped with a what-if tool. With each imaginative what-if, your mental toolkit expands. What if I lose my job? A chance to discover new opportunities. What if I'm criticized unfairly? A moment to flex my indifference muscles. What if my trusty toaster stages a mutiny and burns my bread? An opportunity to savor the simplicity of a buttered crust. Negative visualization, then, is not about becoming a doomsayer, chanting omens of gloom. It's about holding a mental fire drill, so when life's alarms blare, you're strolling out of the building, calm as a zen master, while others scramble. It's the difference between boarding a ship that's already weathered many storms, and setting sail on untested waters. Both may reach the destination, but one captain sleeps better at night. And so, as you engage in this stoic practice, do so with the lightness of being that comes from knowing you're playing life on hard mode, Voluntarily, proactively. It's the paradoxical joy found in contemplating the tough stuff, the chuckle in the face of hypothetical adversity, knowing that it serves to fortify your real-world defenses. Negative visualization when done with the right spirit can be as enjoyable as it is enlightening. It's a bit like donning your most outrageous outfit for a costume party of the mind. You're not really expecting an alien invasion, but should extraterrestrials drop by, 
They'll find you unfazed, adorned in your mental spacesuit, ready to greet the new neighbors. As we wrap up this session on stoic practices and the artful anticipation of life's hiccups, remember that visualization is but a means to an end. It's not about dwelling in a state of perpetual pessimism, but about embracing the full spectrum of existence with preparedness and poise. Stay with me, for our next discourse will be a practical exploration of resilience, an essential skill for the intrepid stoic voyager, readying to navigate the unpredictable seas ahead with confidence and a self-assured smile. As the moon climbs high in the philosophical sky, casting a silvery glow on the garden of our thoughts, let's gather around the campfire of contemplation for a mock horror story session that would make even the most stoic stoics chuckle. This is not your typical tale of terror, but rather a playful jaunt through the practice of premeditatio malorum, as we envision with whimsy the specters of inconvenience that may haunt our daily lives. Picture this. It's a dark and stormy morning. The birds are silent, the wind howls, and your alarm clock, sensing the ominous atmosphere, decides to join the orchestra of unease with a cacophony of beeps. As you rub the sleep from your eyes, you prepare to face the day, armed with nothing but your wit and a steely resolve sharpened by stoic wisdom. But what's this? You swing your legs out of bed and, oh, the horror, your foot lands in an unexpected puddle. The dreaded sock, Soka 3000, an unforeseen leak that's decided your bedroom is its new tributary. No matter. With a wry grin, you recall Seneca's words, a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a person perfected without trials. So you squelch across the room, your day off to a decidedly damp start. Next, you stumble into the kitchen, fumbling for the coffee pot, your lifeline to lucidity. But as you flip the switch, a sputter, a cough, and alas, the machine gasps its final breath, exuding a scent of burnt rubber rather than roasted beans. A lesser soul might despair, but not you, the stoic trainee. You recall the noble art of making do. And with a spark of improvisation, you brew a cup of lukewarm tap water tea. Fortune, you declare to the indifferent appliances, is a fickle friend. Now you're ready to set off into the world, but lo, your trusty steed, that is your car, which has gallantly galloped many a mile, has decided to retire without notice, right on your driveway. A shiver runs down your spine, not from fear, but from the thrill of the challenge. What we fear doing most, you muse invoking the logos, is usually what we most need to do. And so, you embark on a valiant quest on foot, your chariot's rest day transforming into an opportunity to reconnect with nature and your own cardiovascular health. The day is a gauntlet of trials, emails that multiply like mischievous gremlins, meetings that could make even a ghost yawn, and the office printer. That is, quite clearly possessed. Yet, you navigate each spectral obstacle with the grace of a ballet dancer tiptoeing through a graveyard, turning potential terrors into triumph, with the flick of the stoic mindset. As the sun sets and our story concludes, you arrive home, not weary and beleaguered, but with a sense of satisfaction. You've peered into the abyss of inconvenience, you've danced with the demons of discomfort, and you've emerged not just unscathed, but with a new, Appreciation for life's unpredictable pageantry, the tales shared around this campfire of contemplation are not merely to spook or entertain, but to arm you with the courage and mirth necessary to forecast life's downpours with equanimity. For in the heart of premeditatio, Malorum lies not a horror story, but a heroic saga of human spirit, resilience, and the power of a well-timed stoic chuckle. As the embers of our campfire fade and the stars twinkle with stoic approval, we are reminded that the true adventure lies in applying these playful premonitions to our own lives. So stoke the flames of foresight and humor within your soul, for when dawn breaks, a day filled with both specters and smiles awaits. Next time, we'll delve into the stoic's toolbox, picking out the most practical tools for maintaining tranquility amidst the phantoms of modernity. Stay tuned, dear viewer, for our philosophical saga is far from over, and each twist in the tale equips us to face the moral with courage, laughter, and a touch of stoic flair, shifting our gaze to a different facet of stoic practice. Let's examine voluntary discomfort, 
a concept that might just be the hard mode of living, but with profound psychological benefits. Think of it as the reality survival show of daily existence, where you're both the intrepid contestant and the shrewd producer, choosing to face them. Wilderness of discomfort with intentionality and grit. Envision yourself not in a lavish set with cameras rolling, but in the quiet simplicity of your own life, where you choose to take colder showers, decline the extra helping, or sleep on the floor instead of your cozy bed. These acts might seem to teeter on the edge of asceticism, yet in the stoic arena, they are intentional practices, rehearsals for resilience. Much like a survival show where comforts are stripped away, revealing the raw human spirit beneath, voluntary discomfort unveils the strength. Nestled within us, often dormant under layers of routine luxury, you see, dear stoic survivalists, by sporadically embracing hardship, you immunize yourself against the impact of actual adversities. It's akin to the training montage in every great adventure film. You're fortifying your willpower, honing mental endurance, and cultivating an unshakable tranquility against life's tumultuous tides. In the same way, a participant on a survival show learns to kindle a fire in the pouring rain. You learn to ignite the flame of perseverance in the downpour of life's unforeseen challenges. Let's take a page out of the playbook of contemporary reality shows, where contestants willingly forego modern conveniences to test their mettle against nature's unplugged backdrop. In a Survivor-esque twist, you toss aside the metaphorical comfort blanket, opting instead for the stark bivouac of minimalism. This isn't about punishing oneself, but about learning to appreciate the full spectrum of human experience, to find contentment with less and Discover that your well-being is not dependent on the external. By adopting this hard-mode living, even if only temporarily you sharpen your ability to adapt, to look discomfort in the eye with a steadfast gaze and a knowing smile. You become the hero of your own epic, not braving tropical storms or outmaneuvering opponents for a million-dollar prize, but navigating the everyday challenges with a peace that surpasses the ephemeral reward of material gain. Consider this. In Naked and Afraid, contenders are stripped of all but the most basic tools to survive in the wild. In the stoic practice of voluntary discomfort, you're stripped of superficial needs and wants, equipped instead with the sturdy blade of philosophy. To carve out a life of virtue and simplicity, you learn that you need not fear the occasional cold night under the stars of fortune's fickle skies, for you've built an internal hearth that keeps the hearth of the soul aglow. As we wrap up this segment on the stoic reality show of voluntary discomfort, remember that the true prize isn't a tribal necklace or a title. It's the profound realization that the less you need to be happy, the happier you can be with less. So as we extinguish the campfire of stoic hardships, know that you carry with you the unextinguishable torch of inner resilience. Join us in the next installment of our stoic saga, where we'll explore how to keep this torch aflame in the face of adversity, ensuring that no no matter what trials the producers of fate may throw our way, we will remain the last contestant standing in the arena of life, a survivor of the highest order. Stay tuned, for the greatest adventure is not found on screen, but in the mastery of oneself through the timeless wisdom of Stoicism. In today's session, we find ourselves seated in the cozy armchair of the Stoic Relationship Counselor, sifting through the letters of modern-day loves and friendships, all seeking the ageless wisdom of stoic philosophy. Picture the scene as an advice column for the heart, yet one that bypasses the syrupy cliches for the robust time-tested counsel of the ancients. Dear stoic sage, I find myself adrift in the tumultuous seas of modern romance, where ghosting and mixed signals are as common as the swipes on a dating app. How might I navigate these waters with the steady compass of stoicism? Ah. The quest for connection in an age of digital courtship. The Stoics would advise you to focus on what is within your power, your actions, your virtues, and your equanimity. To the Stoic relationships are like two gardeners tending to their shared plot of earth. Each must cultivate their own virtues first before they can. Nurture a joint harvest of love and respect. Be clear in your intentions, communicate with honesty, and remember Epictetus's wise words. Some things are in our control and others not. Focus on being the best version of yourself, knowing that you cannot control the affections or actions of another. 
Dear Stoic Guide, my friendships seem to be a source of constant drama. How can I apply Stoicism to foster more meaningful and less tumultuous connections? In friendships, as in all relationships, the Stoic seeks harmony and mutual growth. Marcus Aurelius himself said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. In essence, do not mirror pettiness or gossip. Instead embody the virtues you wish to see in others. Practice active listening, be present, and view challenges as opportunities to exercise understanding and patience. Friendship to the Stoic is less about seeking validation and more about a shared journey towards self-improvement and wisdom. Dear Sage of Stoicism, sometimes, it feels like love is a battlefield. How can Stoicism help me maintain peace and happiness in my romantic relationship? Ah, the battlefield of love, where emotions can run rampant like unchecked soldiers in the fray. The Stoic enters this arena armored with self-awareness and discipline. Remember that love is not about possession but about appreciation. It thrives on the recognition of each person's freedom and dignity. Practice Amor Fati, the love of fate. Embrace the challenges and joys alike as part of your shared narrative. And most importantly, cultivate the four cardinal virtues. Let wisdom guide your decisions. Courage fortify your commitment. Temperance balance your desires and justice steer your actions toward fairness and kindness. So, dear seekers of stoic harmony in love and friendship, take these words and weave them into the tapestry of your relationships. Let us write the next letter together, not with ink, but with the actions and choices that shape our shared human experience. For in the grand advice column of life, it is not the query that matters most, but the wisdom with which we respond. Join us next time as we continue to explore the rich interplay between Stoicism and our daily interactions, ensuring that each relationship is not just a transaction, but a transformation, a chance to practice virtue, deepen understanding, and cultivate a legacy of lasting bonds, as the aroma of freshly brewed office coffee mixes with the clatter of keyboards. We find ourselves in the bustling heart of commerce, the modern workplace. Picture the setting of a beloved office sitcom. Quirky characters and comedic interludes abound, yet beneath the surface of banter, a stoic undercurrent runs deep. Let's draw the blinds on this corporate theater. For today we're scrutinizing the parallels between stoic philosophy and job strategies within these hallowed cubicles. Scene 1. The office oracle, our protagonist, faces the daily Sisyphean task of emails. Instead of succumbing to digital dread, they channel Seneca, who might say, we suffer more from imagination than from reality. The oracle tackles the inbox with discipline, transforming the mundane into a practice of focus and temperance, much like a stoic turning routine into ritual. Cue the entrance of the chatty colleague, whose gossip-laden monologues could test the patience of a statue. Here, our stoic office oracle employs the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, reminding themselves, you have power over your mind, not outside events. With a polite nod and a return to work, they demonstrate that even amidst the clamor of colleagues, one can cultivate an inner citadel of tranquility. Next, the plot twist. A project goes awry, deadlines loom like thunderclouds, and the team huddles, anticipating a storm of reprimands. But our stoic sage, the team leader, channels Epictetus. It's not what happens to you, but how you react that matters. They pivot with agility, viewing the setback not as a disaster, but as an opportunity for innovative problem solving, a chance to exemplify stoic adaptability. As lunch hour approaches, the temptation of the break room beckons. Donuts lay in ambush, promising sweet surrender. Yet our hero, fortified by the stoic virtue of temperance, gracefully declines. They recognize, like a seasoned athlete of virtue, that the ephemeral pleasure of indulgence pales in comparison to the lasting satisfaction gleaned from self-control. But comedy is never far in our sitcom, like Office. The tech troubadour, ever the source of wit, grapples with a rebellious printer. As frustration mounts, a quip from the oracle cuts the tension. Choose not to be harmed, and you won't feel harmed. And you won't feel harmed. And you won't feel harmed. Haven't been, laughter ensues, and the situation is defused, 
a stoic lesson imparted through humor rather than lecture. Throughout the day, our stoic office oracle demonstrates that the workplace can be a fertile ground for philosophical cultivation. From the intern wrestling with imposter syndrome to the executive facing ethical dilemmas, stoic principles offer a script for navigating them. Corporate labyrinth with integrity and poise. So as our episode draws to a close, the cast of characters departing the stage of screens and swivel chairs, we're reminded that stoicism is more than just a philosophy. It's a practical guide for the workspace odyssey. It teaches us to distinguish between tasks we can influence and those we must accept, to engage with our work with both passion and detachment, and to transform every challenge into a stepping stone toward personal excellence. Tune in next time when we'll dissect the role of stoic resilience in the face of organizational change, mergers, and the juggernaut of career progression. Until then, may the spirit of Zeno guide your professional endeavors, infusing each task, meeting and coffee break with a dose of stoic wit and wisdom. As the warmth of the morning sun gently nudges you awake, you find yourself nestled in the cozy embrace of your bed, the sanctuary where you're Dreams were as sweet as a sitcom laugh track. But as consciousness floods in, so do the reminders of life's little sitcom-esque scenarios waiting to test your stoic resolve, particularly in the realm of emotions. Enter the scene. You're at breakfast. The symphony of the morning news humming in the background when suddenly your beloved toast leaps out of the toaster, blackened, charred and decidedly unappetizing. A surge of irritation bubbles up, threatening to spoil the serenity of your sunrise scene. But then, the stoic within you chuckles, recalling Epictetus's counsel. It's not events that disturb people, it's their judgments concerning them. So you gaze at your burned offering, smirking at the triviality of the tantrum it almost provoked. A sense of calm washes over you as you opt for surreal, musing on the impermanence of toast and breakfast crises. The plot thickens as you embark upon your commute. You're wedged between the scylla and charybdis of traffic, honking horns and exhaust fumes your companions. The old you might have succumbed to road rage cursing the gods of the highway, but the stoic you. You recognize this as prime time for a character, building montage, transforming gridlock into a golden opportunity for an impromptu karaoke session. As Seneca might tweet, anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. So you belt out tunes with the gusto of a Broadway star, your car a roving theater of stoic serenity amid the chaos of the morning rush. And oh the workplace, this ecosystem brimming with emotional landmines. Your boss, a well-meaning soul with the uncanny ability to drop last, minute assignments on your desk does just that. Instead of spewing a soliloquy of despair, your stoic wit sees the humor in the cosmic joke. You recall Marcus Aurelius musing about the ebb and flow of workplace fortune, except whatever comes to you woven in the pattern of your destiny. For what could more aptly fit your needs? With a wry grin, you roll up your sleeves, ready to tackle the task. After all, if life hands you lemons, the stoic way is to turn that citrus into a juggling act worthy of a standing ovation. Later, in the break room, you encounter the office drama, colleagues animatedly dissecting last night's reality TV escapades, Emotions run high as they debate the merits of contestants, as if discussing gladiators in the Roman Colosseum. A younger, less stoic he might have dived headlong into the fervor, but now, you remember that the true arena is within, and the real victory is mastering your passions, not the remote control. So you offer a sage nod, a knowing smile, and pour yourself a cup of coffee, unswayed by the tempest in a teapot brewing before you. The curtain falls on your day, and as you reflect upon the scenes that played out, you realize something profound. Emotions, like sitcom characters, can be wildly colorful, often unpredictable, and sometimes downright wacky. But armed with stoic wisdom and a healthy dose of humor, you navigate through them with the grace of a philosopher, poet, finding joy in the very act of living, with a good laugh at the quirks of the human condition. So as we fade to black on today's episode of Managing Emotions the Stoic Way, keep your heart light and your wit sharp. For in the great sitcom of life, it's not the emotional roller coasters that define us, but how we ride them, with a chuckle, a smile, and the stoic knowledge that this too shall pass.
Stay tuned for our next philosophical adventure, where we'll tackle the stoic approach to life's reruns and reroutes, ensuring that no matter how many times the script gets flipped, we're always ready for our close-up, with equanimity as our co-star, as the first rays of dawn usher in another chapter of our epic quest. This grand adventure called life, we gear up for the inevitable boss battles that await us, for it is in these moments of adversity that the Stoic's toolkit truly shines, like a legendary weapon forged in the forges of philosophy. So dear gamer, let's code. Switch to a narrative where Stoic wisdom becomes our ultimate cheat code in the game of existence. Imagine you're facing the boss level of a crucial project, deadlines looming like a hydra with a calendar for heads. Each head, a task snarling deadlines and demands. The uninitiated might quiver in fear, their HP draining with the stress of the challenge. But you, you've equipped the armor of equanimity, a stoic enchantment that allows you to encounter the Hydra with a calm focus, a knowing smirk that says, is that all you've got? With each breath, you channel Marcus Aurelius, the stoic power player who understood life's high stakes. The obstacle on the path becomes the way. You tackle each head of the beast with precision. Slicing through the totos with the sword of action, your strikes timed by the metronomo. Discipline, the Hydra's heads fall away, not by luck or chance, but by the steadfast application of your stoic training. As the day progresses you face the dreaded meeting of doom, a gather round, the table gauntlet where ideas clash like titans and egos vie for supremacy, yet you remain unfazed, your shield of perspective at the ready. You recall the teachings of Epictetus, who knew a thing or two about maintaining a leveled H-bar. Men are disturbed not by things, but by the view which they take of them. You deflect criticisms and parry interruptions, your contributions precise, your demeanor unshakable. And what of the unforeseen glitches in the system, the miscommunications and misfires that spawn chaos like gremlins in a retro game? Ah, here lies the true test of the stoic gamer. With a click of the selects button, you summon the pause of reflection, a stoic skill that grants you moments of introspection amidst the mayhem. As Epictetus would say, first say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. With renewed clarity you debug the code of confusion, your strategy imbued with the resilience of a thousand save points. But let us not forget the ultimate weapon in our stoic arsenal, the elixir of Amor Fati, the love of one's fate. This potent potion transforms even the most challenging boss battles into parts of your personal epic. You relish the fight not just for the XP, but for the joy of the journey it represents, an opportunity to level up in virtue, wisdom, and the ineffable art of living well. So as you face the endgame of the day, the sun setting like the closing credits of an 8-bit classic, take a moment to save your progress. Reflect on the power-ups gained, the skills honed, and the allies by your side. For every boss battle conquered with stoic wisdom is not just a victory for the avatar you play, it's a triumph for the soul behind the screen. Now let's respawn with anticipation for the next episode of our stoic saga, where we'll navigate new levels, encounter side quests of significance, and continue to rack up high scores in courage, integrity, and the invaluable currency of inner peace.